introducing to you first on my left, riding out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with red trim, originally from Manadu, Indonesia, now training in Honolulu, Hawaii. He weighed in at 125 and one half pounds. His record stands at 20 wins, six losses, and one draw, with 10 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the former Indonesian champion, introducing Frankie. Mamuaya and his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the blue corner in this 10 round main event, wearing purple trunks with red trim, hailing from Merida, Republica de Yucatan, Mexico. His weight 127 pounds, his record is, is 29 wins, two losses with 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the WBC number four rank featherweight contender introducing Guti Espadas Jr. <laughs> referee in charge, Lou Filippo now to give instructions. Okay, gentlemen, you had your instruction in the dress room. Shake hands, give us a good fight. All right, the tail of the tape for these featherweights as they're scheduled to go 10 rounds. Espadas 29 and 2, 19 knockouts. Mama Aya at 20 and 6 with 10 knockouts. Look at the difference in the height at 5'9 for Espadas, 5'6 for the youngster from Indonesia. The weight, pound and a half, and the, uh, the years 29 and 25, a four year advantage in that regard for Guti Espadas. He looks so much taller than uh, the young man from Indonesia, though he's listed at 5'9 and uh, Mamu Aya at 5'6. Guti Espadas Jr. looks as though he just towers over him like yeah. he was a heavyweight in against uh, welterweight well, or something. Tommy's going to have that advantage almost against every featherweight. I mean, can you imagine, uh, you know, a 5'9 featherweight, that is very, very tall, and he really used it to his advantage in the fight previously with Oscar Maldonado and against the other fighters who he fights. He's always bigger, he's always towering. I mean, you take a look at him, he's two inches taller than Juan Manuel Marquez, who's a, who's a fairly tall featherweight. Yep. And he's a half a foot taller than Nassim Hamid. Yes. In the same division. Now here he goes to work. He's been really getting good. Just developing. He throws wide swinging punches as spot as looping punches. It almost defies belief, Tom, that he could be as accurate that, as he is with those wide swinging punches that other fighters would not be able to get a, away from them. But he seemingly manages to land them in the same way that uh, Daniel Zaragoza did, in the same way that Bazooka Limon did for all these years. Big, big looping, wide arc punches. The two men have one opponent in common, and that would be Jesus Salud, neither one able to beat them. That's one of the two losses that young Goody Espadas Jr. has, and one of the losses among the six that uh, Mamu Aya has. That was both losses for Espadas came in the same year. They're going to spend just a very few months. Got, I saw him just get wiped out by Daryl Pinkman. Yep. He did that fight in Phoenix. And he wasn't even in that fight, but he's a lot better now than he was then. Well, he's got uh, Mabu Aya backed up into Espadas' corner, and he's working him over pretty good. And this Indonesian fighter throws a couple of bombs and now suddenly goes down to one knee. He got hurt in his. Right side, Tommy still is reaching over and grabbing his rib. He may have really suffered an injury there. He was hurt to the body very badly. Huh? Trying to take a deep breath there because of the body attack of Goody Espadas. And Espadas is right for of that work. Body shot to be the end of it. They're going to stop this. And uh, Mamu Aya is asking, why did you stop it? And I think he knows deep down inside why they stopped it. He just was no match for the taller, more talented Goody Espadas Jr. And uh, they're throwing peanuts into the ring. I don't know if that's a uh, sign of the times or what. Maybe there's an elephant loose in the building. But at any rate, they're throwing a lot of peanuts into the ring. Here's another look at the knockdown. Well, some of the fans are unhappy with the quick stoppage, but the, he was just hurting Mamawaya with body punches, and Mamawaya just couldn't take the attack anymore. He got hit with a number of punches. He got trapped in that corner, couldn't get off the rope. See that body punch? That just slammed into him and just put him right down. He knocked him down with a body punch. Yeah, that, Espada is doing almost all of his damages, almost all of his damage in this fight with punches to the body. 
and Mamawai just could not withstand those wide swinging shots of his and another victory in the Gutiya Spotis ledger which is growing and this guy's becoming a very serious contender. Well he's 30 and 2 now Rich and he's got 20 knockouts as you see the end of it and he uh, really punishes the uh, fighter from Indonesia Mamu Aya. Here's those body shots again. He was in trouble here. I think that Lou might have been a little quick in stopping the fight, although Mamawaya was not throwing any more punches at that point. He was just sitting there trying to defend himself, trying to stop the punches, not doing that great a job there. And he uh, did not like to stop it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a time of 2 minutes 17 seconds in round number one. The winner by way of knockout, Guti Espadas Jr. So he runs his record now to 30 wins, 2 losses, and 20 knockouts. Very big, very talented, very tough young featherweight. He's in the ring now, people taking his picture and what have you. There he is, not a mark on him, and hardly a workout for him tonight.